So, 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 so that sort of uh, sums up the mentality of that particular club. <laughs> anyway, uh, Frank left in, uh, what, 1949, and then he was drafted in the U.S. Army. And he came back to Limerick, and he's, he's by now, he's Corporal Frank McCourt. My God, I said, my big brother. He, he showed up, and he's got the, the, at that period, the American Army uniform was magic. If a guy couldn't get lucky in the U.S. Army uniform, he wasn't trying, you know. <laughs> so it was such a, such a treat to walk around Limerick with him, with his corporal stripes, the whole bit. And listening to these women, they were downright obscene, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus is another Robert Taylor, you know. <laughs> For those of you who know Robert Taylor, he was a, uh, a heartthrob of his time. Uh, but I do, the one, one thing that sticks in my mind forever was the day he left. And it was a, your typical, it was sort of cloudy, overcast and whatever. And he headed off up the hill on his way to the railway station. And it, God damn it, it just started to rain just at that time. So Alfie and I and my mother, it was, it was grim. We went back. Malachi was gone. He was in England. And Frank is on his way to America. And back to the house that night. Talk about gloom, doom, and whatever. Anyway, he arrived. He came back. For a, he was stationed in Germany. And he came back for a visit in 1951. And that's where he took Limerick by storm in his uniform. <laughs> uh, what's another thing I was going to tell you? Jesus, I'm losing. <laughs> what did I come in here for? <laughs> I knew I stick him in here for something. Uh, anyway, I don't know. There was another thing. Whether you know it or not, Frank. He played, played the drum, in the, big, the bass drum in this Boy Scout band. And Jesus, he could whirl and twirl his sticks like he put Gene Krupa to shame. And, oh. and that was another one of his many talents. And uh, then, he, 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 he's, he's, of course, he brought me over here next. And, but I keep telling people, all that stuff in Angela's ashes, don't, list, don't believe it. One of the reasons we left was there was a watercress crop failure. <laughs> and if you've ever gone a day without a watercress sandwich, you know. <laughs> and the, uh, there was a terrible blight on the vineyards and so on. And Daddy had to sell the polo ponies. And that was heartbreaking. And that, that's what our, that made our exit from Limerick complete. Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, Peter Quinn, I'm Malachi McCourt, by the way, and this is Alfie and Mike. And uh, uh, Peter Quinn said that uh, when somebody asked him if he knew the McCourts, and Peter said, do I know the McCourts? When we, the family, they took them in when their yacht sank. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mixed uh, time for us uh, on... Uh, this, uh, the family is all here, Fam uh, gathered from all over the place, but um, our son Malachi uh, married his beloved Laura uh, last Saturday, and uh, they baptized a little child. And uh, if you see a Franciscan around here, Father Brian Jordan, he's the one that did it, you know. And so thank him. And, uh, you know, the Irish, we do, uh, we, we, we mourn marriage and celebrate death. <laughs> but but in, in this case, we, uh, we are celebrating uh, everything that's going on today. And uh, there's so many, uh, my mind is a world, you know, of what to say of the, 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 this man, Frank McCourt, knew me all of my 78 years, and he would have been 79 a month after, after he died. And he started a whole literary 
Renaissance, really. And an Irish uh, literary movement is a group of Irish writers who live in the same town and hate each other. <laughs> and, uh, and so living, uh, and of course living in Limerick, it, uh, uh, it was a very puritanical city and uh, uh, there was a one uh, member of parliament there, uh, Oliver Flanagan, he said, about when Frank wrote about Angela's Ashes, about the sexual, my, my, my mother's sexual life with this drunken lout. And of course, he, he talked to me about that, and he was feeling awkward about putting it in. I said, There'll be no spine to your book if you don't put it in. And, uh, and, and he did put that in. And consequently, I am writing another book myself, which is called I Read Your Brother's Book. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>